Hi everyone, it's Jennifer Escalera, and today I have special guest Alicia Ying. Yay! Alicia. Hi Alicia! Hi! Thank you for being here. Of course. Yeah, so Alicia Ying, the next big thing, she's a success coach, psychic, and self-proclaimed spiritual gangster. And she helps badass boss babes burst through their mental barricades so that they can achieve their goals with ease. Basically, she turns people into kick-ass superheroes. Her hashtag is superheroes unite. So write that down, everyone. If you're tired of busting your ass for little to no reward, then you're in the right place. She believes that success starts by saying yes to you. Her specialty is being able to pinpoint the exact mental and emotional blocks that are preventing someone from succeeding, removing it, and then giving them an action plan to get what they want. Spiritual guidance plus inspired action equals getting everything you want in life. That is so amazing, Alicia. Thanks. That's so awesome. That's very powerful. My goodness. Yeah, I'm all about, I kind of got this <clears throat> download or about my mission and it was really about empowering people to live their best life and basically being able to use their strengths to get what everything that they desire. And I just found through my own, um, through my own personal experience and as well as my clients that, you know, if we're able to really hone in on what we're really good at and really celebrating that and then leading with that in our lives, everything that we've ever wanted ends up coming a lot easier and it's a lot more fun. And then there's just so much more love to be shared. So that's kind of why I'm all about. I love it. I love, love it. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. So today we're here today to talk about how to apply meditation in your life. So there's some questions that I'm going to ask you. Are you ready? I am. <laughs> okay. So question number one, how long have you been meditating? Oh, uh, well, I've been trying to meditate for decades, um, and I'm one of those people that hated it because I, my mind works very fast. And so if I don't have something for it to focus on, like when you're just like, all right, I'm just going to sit here, like it just, I it drove me nuts. I'm so solitary would de definitely be my worst punishment if I went to prison. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I get the short answer to your question is, um, I have been doing it for like a decade, um, unsuccessfully or like just ups and downs, but I, it really became, started to become like a, a daily practice that I figured out for myself for about like a year and a half now. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So tell us that journey. So you meditate daily. So yes, now I actually meditate daily. Um, it's, you know, I, I, it started off with yoga. Like, you know, when you're in your Shavasana after you've like sweated your balls off and yeah. you're just exhausted. Yeah. Um, and then just being able to lay there on the mat. And once my physical body was spent, it was easier for my mind to also just chill out. Um, and that was very relaxing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I started, um, my friend had like a coupon for Lumosity, um, that meditation app. And that was interesting, but I was still like working on trying to relax my mind. Like I was like, you need to relax. That was obviously not helpful. Right. Um, <laughs> and, um, what really was a big turning point for me was when, um, I watched a video from a, a famous Buddhist monk and he said that you know, meditation is literally just can be as short as like breathing in and then breathing out. So it, it was just that simple of like, okay, just focus on the breath in. And I was like, okay, I'm going to breathe in. And then he's like, okay, and now exhale. He's like, you just meditated. And I was like, what? Like, it's, <laughs> like yeah. mind blown. And so I started using, um, that technique, um, mm -hmm. and then slowly started building my way up. Wow, that's awesome. So you started with breathing meditations? I honestly just, because for me, it wasn't, a, for people who are very over analytical and their mind goes too fast, like mine, um, what I needed to do was direct my thoughts to something else and focus on something else. So it wasn't focusing on making my mind blank because 
that's quite honestly almost impossible. Um, but it was about, okay, so I need to focus on my breath. And once I started focusing on literally like the inhale and then the outhale, the outhale, the exhale, then uh-huh. my, the chatter, the monkey mind chatter started to disappear. And then I could get more clarity. Um, <clears throat> but then also once I became psychic, then the meditation started to turn into tapping into my center and then being able to open my third eye to receive guidance from the universe. So then I can be like, okay, what do you want me to do today? Yeah. <laughs> How can you help me out of my blunder? <laughs> and then really being able to focus on hearing them and focus on feeling them or focus on seeing them. And then that way it was like a nice meditation with them to soothe and calm me. Yeah. Yeah. So what got you started in meditation? Like what finally motivated you and and got you into practicing it regularly? Well, um, I'm a super stressful person because I like, I obviously am Asian and I grew up with a tiger mom. And so being an (laughs) overachiever was something that has just, it's honestly ingrained in my DNA, like not just from my upbringing, but from like my Chinese ancestry. Mm -hmm. Um, But the problem was, is that it wasn't making me happy. And I realized like in my early twenties that I was not like, I don't, I just did not, I refused to believe that being this miserable this much of the time was not the way that I was supposed to like endure life. Mm -hmm. So after lots of like research on different ways to try and calm down that either the the depression or calm down the stress, obviously I found meditation, but I was like, you know, my father's Buddhist. I was like, I'm not sitting on some cold stones for eight hours trying to achieve enlightenment. Like, Mm -hmm. I got, I got a life to live. (laughs) I've got things to do. Right. So, but I did appreciate, I really love like the Buddhist mentality on meditation and how, again, just focusing on something that's, that you can actually see and feel made it a lot easier than just, it's all about making your mind blank. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Totally. I mean, that's a common theme that I hear from my students that they have so much chatter that to be directed to quiet their mind is like an oxymoron. I mean, it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't jive and they end up giving up. So I, I'm, I really appreciate the fact that you brought that up because it's real. It happens. And you know, they're not alone in this process of learning meditation and learning your style that works for you. Yeah, I I think, and it's funny because that's been one of my huge, like, uh, like, uh, things that I really believe is that there are 10,000 different ways to do something. So it really is, again, catering to your strengths and what is actually going to work for you. So, for people, some people really enjoy just silence. Some people really enjoy like guided meditations. I, I actually really like those a lot. <clears throat> and I do a lot of them for my clients because when I have someone to tell me like, okay, now imagine walking into a forest that it's making my very active mind. It gives it a task to mm-hmm. do. And then therefore when it has a task to do, it then doesn't have enough room to compute all the other worries and fears and anxieties that I had before. So that was also something that really helped me. And then now that I'm doing it on my own, just like right when I get up in the morning, I just focus on my breath. I'm like, oh, thank God I'm breathing today. Yeah. <laughs> At least my body allowed me to breathe all night long while I was right. unconscious. Right. And then I just start there and it becomes a lot easier. So I'm like, okay, I can physically feel my diaphragm raise mm-hmm. and fall. So that's mm-hmm. something that I can tangibly get to in this physical universe. And then go off into other multiverses and blah, blah, blah later once I'm, you know, out of my head. Right, right. So is the breathing style your favorite? I think it's the most effective to drop into that place at any time of the day. So while 
in the morning, I do tend to take more time or I'll find a guided meditation or I'll listen to like rainfall with like and Rama beats in the background. Um, just cause it personally does make me feel good in the morning. Um, I find that the breathing is so effective because you can do it while you're at work. You can do it while you're driving and you're, you know, stuck in traffic. You can do it when you're even on the phone and having a fight with someone and just be like, Oh my God, like namaste, this bitch on her way. <laughs> Breathe in, breathe out. <gasps> yep. <laughs> what do I need to say at this point? You know, so it's, it's, it's really, I just feel like it's very practical. And yeah. I'm just very much about, I mean, I love the woo world, but sometimes I just need practical tools that I can grab at right away and, you know, get me to think clearly before I see red. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So true, so true. So is that what motivates you to do your practice every day? Because it's so practical and it's so effective and it has, it sounds like it quickly helps you to get into that space. Yeah, it does because I'm a big believer that your emotions are a guiding compass from your higher self that is telling you what is on your purpose path and what isn't. And so when I feel crappy, anxious, fearful, angry, I know that that's my emotions telling me, yeah, th whatever this thing is that's causing you those negative emotions, that's not on your purpose path. That's not making you feel good. You want to feel joyful, grounded, you know, expanded, free. So <clears throat> for me, just having that simple inhale, exhale allows me a few seconds to just do a reality check and then allow me to assess the situation for what it is and say, oh yeah. This, it's that person's baggage. Like it doesn't have to do with me. Okay, cool. Now I can let it go. Or, you know, Hey, should I take this job opportunity? Like, it seems really cool. But then if I just breathe, cause I'm like, you know, if you need the money or if you need some other, if you think it's good, right. Your ego self is like, this could be great. You don't want to ever want to say no. You could be awesome, huge, big people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not the best thing for, you know, your highest purpose and, and your path. And so when I can just inhale and exhale, sometimes, you know, you can, can do that three times. And then you're like, yeah, I really just didn't want to do that. And you just mm -hmm. say no. And I just get that clarity so much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And you had shared a little bit about how you apply meditation or your practice into your daily life, like in the morning or when you're on the phone with someone or someone's, you know. Um, triggering you or you're dealing with your stress. Are there other times that you could share with us about how you apply meditation in your daily life? Uh, I think for me, the, the way that um, what I really love using it for is to deepen my connection with my higher self and with my spiritual guides. Mm -hmm. Being a psychic, it does take practice to um, tap in and really hear them clearly because when my ego voice is too loud, I like, I don't even know where they are and it's annoying. Right. I'm like, but I have this superpower. I should be right. able to do it yes. all the time. Yeah. So what I love to do is I, I make sure to take time to either a do a guided meditation or b do the breathing to a point where I can really connect with them every day mm -hmm. and just say, Hey, what do I need to know today in order to, you know, follow my purpose this lifetime, like why I was put on this planet at this specific time and really deepen my connection with them. And the more that I do that in meditation, the better that, the more clarity I have moving forward in my business. And I feel better as a person because then I feel more clear about how I can help others. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very rewarding for me. And plus it's just nice to know that you have people on your side, right? Um, so. Right. So it sounds like for you, the, the evolution of your practice is that you found a reason to meditate versus it just being part of like our culture of, oh, just go and meditate, you know? It, yeah. I think uh, on the practical side, it's, it's the easiest de-stressor, right? Because it's easy to turn to vices. Um. Right. Like I, you know, I, like I, I was a smoker for a long time. Um, and you know, there's all these different kinds of vices, even it's just like binge eating because 
you know, watching movies, what else are you going to do? Right. Um, but I have found that the more that I have practiced these daily meditations, and again, it's literally, it takes three seconds. It could take three seconds to three minutes to 30 minutes, however long you would want to do it for. Yeah. It's really helped me chill, like remove the pull from my ass, to be honest. Awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's annoying and I think it, it's hard. So I think if you're beginning your journey, just starting with focusing on the breath is the easiest way to just tap into it. And then as you start to see it help you relax, help you be less stressed, help you to remove anxieties and fears, then it's easier to be like, oh, okay, I see how beneficial this is because then I'm happier. And I'm pretty sure everybody just wants to have a happy life. Mm-hmm. So once it did, once I started to see my happiness increase, then I was like, okay, how can I use this to even further my happiness? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just gave us a really good tip and that was going to be my last question. Oh, so if you want to add another one, um, but what's like your number one tip that you can help us to stay regular in our meditation practice? Well, my, what my favorite tip is for us to stay regular and consistent is to attach it to, uh, an activity that's already a routine for you. So if like, for example, um, like what's something that you do every day, right? So if it is making a cup of coffee every single morning, then while you're stirring your coffee, you can just take those few seconds to just, okay, I'm going to focus on my breath. like while the coffee's brewing, right? So it's like, okay, breathe in, breathe out. And so when you attach it to something that you do every single day, right? Because the meditation is a calmer and the caffeine's an upper, so it bounces right. out. Yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but then it becomes easier to remember to do. Um, just like if it's brushing your teeth. Exactly. Um, or if it's like right before you eat a meal, mm-hmm. if you take like three seconds to just focus on your breath before you eat, then you become a little bit more mindful. So that would be my suggestion. Just attach mm-hmm. it to an activity that you already do on routine every single day. That is a very quick, easy, I never thought to say it in that way. I'm really glad glad that you said that because I think that's going to resonate with people. I think they're going to already be able to look at their schedule because we all have some type of ritual in our life. I mean, we all have to get up. So at some point in your life, you're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. So I think being able to be as specific as you were right now to say, okay, what's the routine that you're already doing and just add your practice with it. Yeah. And especially where it's something where you have that dead time, Mm -hmm. right? Like when you're waiting for water to boil, if you're, you know, making a cup of tea or you're throwing your lunch in the microwave, right? You've got those like 60 seconds, 90 seconds. So in that time, just like, okay, I'm just going to focus on my breath for even 10 of those seconds while my food's warming up. And even that will help with the consistency. Yeah. Yeah. I think just to add that as a mom, if your toddler or child or baby is screaming (laughs) or just going crazy in the other room, like that's your time to be like, okay, let me prepare. (laughs) It really, I feel like it's really effective, especially in those high stress situations. Like, when someone's pissing you off, it's like, no, nope, okay, let me just breathe, right? right. Just breathe. Just like, breathe. Breath. Breath. It just, like you said, it just takes that three second, just that in and out breath and like, okay, I'm, I'm ready, you know? And I think also just the one last tip is just when you're breathing, it's not just to breathe, but it's like, it's just to focus your mind on something else for a hot second so you can get perspective. And then, you know, physiologically, when you actually take a deep breath, you're bringing in more oxygen into your body, which actually allows you to think more clearly. Yeah. So for those of you who are like, why are they sitting on stones for eight hours a day? Because honestly, I don't get it either. Um, a lot of it is because just even physiologically with the body, getting more oxygen, slowing the heart rate down, actually you know, de-stresses you, brings more oxygen to the brain so that you can think more clearly and accurately and therefore make a better decision. 
So exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for being so real and just of course. It down for us and being able to share your experience, because I think there's going to be a lot of people who are either watching this or listening to it are going to really relate to you. I mean, you're speaking yeah. from the modern kind of situations that we're all in and to be able to apply it in an everyday, as well as how you've applied it into being, uh, using your intuition or using your psychic abilities, being able to uh, apply that in your work, in the business, in your business, um, and being able to help people. I think is another way that um, people are going to be able to take away from this and how they can expand their careers or just their passions in life. So yeah. thank I you. I love that. I'm, I'm so thankful. I mean, I, my biggest thing is like, I, I love all of these spiritual tools. They're so fun. And I love seeing dead people and archangels and fairies. <laughs> like that's kind of my world. But yeah. at the end of the day, we do live in the physical universe in this place called earth, you know? Yeah. So I, I think I was given this gift at this specific time to like help the everyday person how to actually apply this stuff instead of just saying, well, just let it go. I'm like, where the F is the manual? I'm letting it go. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, hopefully that helps to anyone who's watching. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> I'm still crazy. That's why I breathe. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So thank you so much for all of your wisdom. And I know everyone is going to really relate and enjoy this. And if you would like to learn more about Alicia, you can go to her website. And would you like to share that with us? Yeah, you can go to my website. It's www.yestotheying.com. Um, so that's Y-E-S-T-O-T-H-E-Y-I-N-G.com. Great. Thank you, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alicia.